Hello YouTubers, my name is Attila Mate from Blue Sky Photography and today I'd like to talk to you about something what is important in my opinion because it affects your photography if you don't know about it. So this would be the pixel, this would be the pixel density, sorry. Uh, what is pixel density and why it is important? Now you have to understand the um, the sensor and how the, the modern uh, digital sensors are working, you know, and, and uh, uh, probably most of you, you know what I'm talking about. So um, what is pixel density? Pixel density, it means that a specific sensor, let's say uh, a specific size of sensor is a 24 megapixel sensor has 24 million pixels on it. Now, if you have a full frame sensor with 24 million pixels on it. And if you have an APS-C size sensor, which is obviously much smaller, and that sensor has 24 million pixels in it, it means that the pixels in the APS-C size sensor, it's, they are much smaller than the pixels on the full frame sensor. Because obviously if they want to jam in 24 million pixels in a smaller sensor size, you, they must reduce the pixel size to be able to jam them in there. So we, if they reduce the pixel size, it means that the uh, pixel density on the APS-C size sensor, it will be higher than on the full frame sensor. When we are talking on the same amount of megapixels. Now, large sensors have less pixel density and smaller sensors has, has, have higher pixel density if the sensor megapixel are the same, the megapixel count. The example, uh, a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor, the pixel density, the pixel size is kind of the same like on a full frame, 40 megapixel roughly, 40 megapixel sensor. If you, if you use a full frame 40, 42, like the Sony A7R Mark II, it has a 42 megapixel, uh, full frame sensor that full frame sensor will have kind of the same pixel density what the 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor have now if we go further down if you go to micro four thirds micro four thirds sensors because they are even smaller the pixel density is even bigger now it means a 20 megapixel micro four thirds sensor will have a pixel density like uh, let's say roughly a 36 megapixel APS-C size sensor and roughly a 50, 60 megapixel, uh, 60 mostly, 60 megapixel full frame sensor, which at the moment it doesn't exist because the biggest uh, full frame sensor I think is the Canon 5 DSR, which is 50 megapixel or 52 or something like that, 50 I'd say. So um, let's not talk about micro four thirds at the moment. Let's just talk about the full frame and the APS-C size sensor. Why it is important? It is really depends. It really depends in what, what kind of photography are you into. Pixel density, it could be important for you, could be very important and could be not really important. So in some cases, the example, if you are a wildlife or a sports photographer, pixel density, it is important because if you have higher pixel density. I mean, you have a 24 megapixel uh, APS-C size sensor. Because the pixel density is higher, the picture will contain more details. In the same time, you have to understand that your low light capability will be less because the pixel size are smaller. So the full frame 24 megapixel sensor will be better in low light because the pixels are bigger but in the same time, it will not contain as much detail as the 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor. Now, sometimes you might uh, not understand when you see a sports photographer. I saw that several times. A sports photographer with a 500 millimeter, 16,000 euro prime lens, and on the back of the lens, there is an 800 euro camera, an APS-C size camera. And I was wondering, why he, he doesn't put a full frame camera on it? I mean, 
it's just it just makes no sense to me you know like hey, he has a 16,000 euro lens and he has an 800 euro camera or a thousand euro camera or whatever, you know, just an APS-C size camera. Why? Well, because he's a sports photographer and this applies also to wildlife photographers, they don't need full frame because full frame, the only advantage of full frame, I would say, is the low light capability and you can print the files a little bit bigger than with APS-C. Now, if you are a wildlife, uh, wildlife or sports photographer, obviously their picture will be mostly in magazines and uh, online, you know, and, and the prints will be maximum, you know, like 18 by 20 inch or something like that. And that is okay. That is, that is more than enough, even the APS-C size sensor. So for them, the extra reach, what the APS-C size sensor gives, the, the crop factor and the pixel density that they have more details in their photo, is more important than the, the larger printing or the low light capability, which the full frame sensor will give. So for wildlife and sport photographers, pixel density, it is really important. And most of the time they will use APS-C size cameras. Now, when you are a portrait photographer or when you are an event photographer, like myself, the example, I am a wedding and portrait photographer, Pixel density is not, is not as much important for you if your priorities are not image quality. I mean, image, when I say image quality, I say details in the image, sharpness in the image, and so on, so on. So I am an image quality freak, I would call myself. You know, I, I seek image quality in everything. I want the best image quality out of my camera. Now, why did I choose APS-C size sensors? Because of this, because of pixel density. Uh, I know that I had to give up something and I had to give up low light capability. And again, printing, big printing. Like, like a wedding photographer or portrait photographer, you never print larger than, I don't know, 14 by 20 inch. You know, that's the maximum you will, you will print or 24 by, I don't know. And that's more than enough. APS-C. I tell you, I used to print 18 by 12 and 20 by 14. I used to print from 16 megapixel Pentax K5. And I tell you, the images were brilliant. So 24 megapixel sensor, you know, crop sensor, it is more than enough. It is more than you need like a wedding or portrait photographer for printing. Now I gave up the low light capability when I moved to APS-C because I used to have full frame cameras and I knew that with full frame cameras, I can go ISO 6400, no problem. And the images were clean. At the moment, I know that I cannot go higher than 3200. Some cases I go with 4000, you know, but that's the maximum because I don't really like noisy images. Now, but what I did, I said, okay, I cannot light. I cannot uh, extra light, you know, like, artificial light, I can add video light, I can add flash, I can... The light you can add if you want, but in the same time, you cannot add the only thing what you cannot add to a, to a picture in post-processing, that is sharpness and details. You can, you can add sharpness, but it will not look the same. It will look different. That's why it is, you see, when a 24 megapixel uh, APS-C size sensor, no anti-aliasing filter. The pictures come out of that sensor. It will look like a, like a 36 megapixel full frame camera with anti-aliasing filter. And you are wondering why, where is the difference? Like, you know, I used to have the 36 megapixel a, a full frame camera, the Sony a7, Sony a7R, sorry. And uh, I was, I, when I was shooting with the A7R and I got the photos in the computer and then I got the photos from the 24 megapixel Nikon camera, uh, which, which is 24 megapixel APS-C size and no anti-aliasing filter. And I was looking at the photos and I just couldn't make the difference. Why? Because the pixel density, it is higher. It means that the picture contains more detail and sharpness. And I tell you, this is, if somebody doesn't agree with me, it's okay. You don't have to, but you, in the same time, I please, I ask you to prove it. If you don't agree with me, no problem, but prove to us. 
show us some examples because I tell you in my experience and I can show you examples and I even have a video about this uh, where I show examples, you know, do you need a full frame or not? I will post a card up here where you can see the video if you want, if you are interested. So if you, if you shoot with a 36 megapixel full frame or if you shoot a 24 megapixel APS-C, the pictures, if you don't blow up very high, you know, uh, sorry, very large, you won't see the difference. So pixel density in one sense, it is important even for portrait photographer, like if you are an image quality freak like myself. If you are not, if you say that image quality, well, when I mean image quality, I mean details and sharpness. If it's not really important for you, then obviously the full frame sensor is better for you because it will have shallower depth of field and it will have larger pixel density, lower pixel density, sorry. That means the pixels will be larger and that's why the lower low light capability is better. Now, when we get to the shallow depth of field, again, I have a video about this, you know, and shallow depth of field and how you can how you can compensate because many photographers will say, yes, I use full frame because of the shallow depth of field. That's true, but in the same time, you can compensate on the APS-C size sensor, the shallow depth of field by using faster glass. So if, the, if you use faster glass on the APS-C, then on the full frame, you are okay. And I give you a simple example. I use a full frame camera with a 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens or I use an APS-C size camera with a Sigma 50 to 100 f 1.8. Well, the depth of field, it will be on my Sigma 50 to 100, like on the f 2.8 on the full frame. So, what are we talking about? I ended up with the full frame camera with the same depth of field, like on the, like on the, um, on the sorry, on the APS-C size camera, the 50 to 100 f 1.8, it will be like the 70 to 200 f 2.8 on the full frame. And in the same time, uh, the ISO performance, you know, it will be kind of the same because I have a faster lens. I can crank up the shutter speed and I can take it off the ISO. So it will be ISO performance roughly the same. So, like I said, Pixel density, it is important in some situations. It is not really important in other situations. But in the same time, when you seek image quality and sharpness, pixel density is something what you have to consider. If you have money, if you have a lot of money, and if you can buy a Sony A7R Mark II, or if you can buy Canon 5DSR, or these cameras which have high pixel density in large sensor, obviously you can do that. But if you want the extra reach from a crop factor and if you want more detail and sharpness in your photos APS-C size sensor without anti-aliasing filter that's the way to go this is my opinion and if you have a different opinion please feel free to share and uh, leave your uh, comment down below in the comment section and uh, i hope that you like this video guys if you like it please like and subscribe and please don't forget to hit the bell near the subscribe uh, button to be notified when I upload another video. So I hopefully this video will be helpful to someone. Like I said, if you want uh, to leave a comment, if you have a different opinion, if you want to add something to this video, please feel free and leave a comment down below. Other than that, I wish you a nice day and I'll see you in the next one. Take care guys. Joe.